नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय Text fifty one, Canto eight, chapter twenty four. Jano janas yad yashate satim gatim. Yaya prapadye ta dorat yam tamaha. Tom twadya, tom twavayam. Tvam tva vayayam janam jnanam amoga anjasa Prapadyate yena jano nijam padam Jano janasya dishate satim katim Yaya prapadye ta darat yayam tamaha Tvam tva vayayam jnanam amoga anjasa Prapadye te yena jano nijam padam Janasya dishate satim gatim Yaya prapadye ta daratyayam tamaha Tvam tva vayam Tvam tva vayam jnanam amoga anjasa Prapadyate yena jano nijam padam Jano janas yadishate satim gatim Yaya prapadyate daratyayam tamaha Tvatva vyayam jnanam amoga anjasa Prapadyate yena jano nijam padam Jano janas yadishate satim gatim Yaya prapadyeta daratyayam tamaha Jano janas yadishate satim gatim Yaya prabhadyeta daratyayam tamaha Tvam tva vayam Prabhadyate yena jano nijam padam Jano janas yadishate satim gatim Yaya padyadyeta daratyayam tamaha Tvam tvadyayam jnanam amogam anjasa Prapadyate yena jano nijam padam janaha A person who is not a bona fide guru An ordinary person Janasya of an ordinary person, 
who does not know the goal of life. Adishyate instructs asatim impermanent material. Gatim the goal of life. Yaya by such knowledge. Prapadyeta he surrenders. Dorat Yayam insurmountable. Tamaha to ignorance. Tam your lordship. To but of Yayam indestructible. <coughs> Gyanam knowledge. Amogham without material contamination. Anjasa, very soon, prapadyate achieves, yena, by such knowledge, janaha, a person, nijam, his own, padam, original position. Translation, a materialistic so-called guru instructs his materialistic disciples about economic development and sense gratification and because of such instructions the foolish disciples continue in the material existence of ignorance but your lordship gives knowledge that is eternal and the intelligent person receives such knowledge receiving such knowledge is quickly situated in his original constitutional position Report by Srila Prabhupada. So called gurus instruct their disciples for the sake of material profit. Some guru advises that one meditate in such a way that his intelligence will increase in regard to keeping his body fit for sense gratification. Another guru advises that sex is the ultimate goal of life and that one should therefore engage in sex to the best of his ability. These are the instructions of foolish gurus. In other words, because of the instructions of a foolish guru, one remains perpetually in material existence and suffers its tribulations. But if one is intelligent enough to take instructions from the Supreme Personality of Godhead as enunciated in Bhagavad Gita or the Sankhya philosophy of Kapila Dev, <clears throat> one can very soon attain liberation and be situated in his original position of spiritual life. The words nija padam are significant. The living entity being part and parcel of the Supreme Personality Godhead has the birthright to a position in Vaikuntha Loka or the spiritual world where there's no anxiety. Therefore, one should follow the instructions of the Supreme Personality of Godhead then as stated in Bhagavad Gita, Chaktva Deham Purnar Janma Naiti Mamiti Sorjana, after giving up one's body, one will return home. Back to Godhead. The Lord lives in the spiritual world in his original personality, and a devotee who follows the instructions of the Lord approaches him, Mam Eti, <laughs> as a spiritual person, such a devotee returns to the personality of Godhead and plays and dances with him. That is the ultimate goal of life. So same theme as yesterday's morning's verse, where the compare and contrast the proper guru, foolish guru, and the foolish follower follows the foolish guru that gets the same um, situation as the foolish guru. Further entanglement in the complexities of material existence. So it's not a, it's a, it's a misnomer. It's not a guru. Someone who's taking the position of, but is falsely taking the position of and popularity doesn't really hold much value. 
Prabhupada on different occasions, multiple occasions, described <clears throat> if he was interested in numbers of followers, he could easily, you know, get numbers of followers by saying things that not Krishna's word, but what's the use? It's, it's, it's misleading. So the interest is not numbers of followers, the interest is to offer something genuine, and for those who wish something genuine, they can receive it. So that the in the market, spiritual marketplace, so many varieties of um, something other than the goal of life. It's not to say that this tradition is the only tradition that offers the goal of life. It's to say there are many that aren't at all traditional and they're misleading. So this is King Satyavrata speaking directly to the personality of Godhead saying, you, the Supreme Lord, I accept you as guru. And the same as yesterday, because he had the good fortune of being face to face with the personality of Godhead like Arjuna had or Uddhava had or others had and received instructions from him. And if that's not available, then one doesn't have that qualification or extreme good fortune, then one can receive those same instructions in disciplic succession. And it's the same, provided there's transparency in the, the deliverer of that message, unediting of the message, just deliver the message. The postal peon personality. So the Supreme Lord writes a letter, Dear Vishnu Das, my beloved part and parcel living entity, here's some instruction for you, your ever well-wisher Lord Krishna. <laughs> and the postal peon delivers the message, Dear Vishnu Das, here's a letter for you, directly from the Supreme Lord. So just deliver the message. Be the instrument of the Lord's message. That's the guru function. And if the if, if other than the Lord's message is delivered, that's not what guru really is. It's an imposter. So uh, the, the Sanskrit, the first line, jana, janasya, adishyate. Asatim Gatim. So, <clears throat> uh, Jana, Janasya, the so called guru, and the, the foolish Janasya, the follower of the so called guru, Dishyate gives instructions in the realm of Asat, the impermanent, the temporary, the material, you know, material elevation elevation to prospering in this life and onto the heavenly planets falls in the category of asat. The goal is not. Krishna is very clear. Uh, one should not aspire for that which is temporary. He's very clear. Don't do that, Arjuna. Not from the highest planets down to the lowest. Why? It's all temporary. Repeated birth and death are taking place in that realm of the temporary. Don't go there. <clears throat> Many people cannot hear that. They, they hear something else. I don't know if you've had the experience. I've had a lot of experience of people, as I travel wearing dhoti and tilak, people say, you know, you're part of a religious movement, religious organization, skipping the preliminaries. They want to know what are the core teachings, and you say the core teachings, they don't hear what you say. They just say, oh, my religion teaches the same thing. You should be good to people. Don't do harm to people and you know, be compassionate. My religion teaches the same thing. It's not what I said that a religion teaches, but that's what they hear. And certainly those are core values of any code of theistic conduct, naturally so. However, you know, the, the teaching that that's that can that can be aspired for by someone that's 
interested in asat, asat katim. The goal is another temporary situation. That's not what the goal is. It takes a while to understand, it took me a while to understand this language of, you know, Emerson and Thoreau were, were considered transcendental poets. And I, you know, I didn't really understand what that meant. Maybe they didn't exactly understand what it meant either. <laughs> but, you know, you know, something like otherworldly or mystical or not worldly. But, you know, specifically, transcendental knowledge, just like chapter four, transcendental knowledge. It's not just for the sake of knowledge. It's not just something that's beyond temporary, as described here. The goal is to be situated in that realm of transcendence where Krishna is from, or the Lord of the spiritual world is from, and we're meant to take shelter there. The transcendental knowledge is meant to deliver us from the bondage of material existence. And of course, what's that? And then there's all kinds of people that have different ideas of what that is. Largely impersonal and voidist. Largely. Largely. Because we're in the material world, very plain and simple, out of aversion to he who is actually supreme. We have this, I want to be supreme mentality. And so we're here to try to lord it over material nature. And you want to let go of the lording it over material nature because there's, it's, it's too, many, too problematic. Then what's left? If you, don't, if you have aversion to the personality of Godhead, then it's easy, impersonal or, or void. This negation of this, what's left is nothing. What's after this is nothing or nothingness or somethingness that's called Brahman. There's, there's really no variety. It's just Sat, Om Tat Sat. <laughs> well, you know, what's, what's Tat? Well, that's another question. <laughs> tat is a pronoun that means that, the, the absolute truth is, is certainly eternal, but the absolute truth is a person. Anyway, that's the goal. That's in the last sentence of the purport. I'll read the last sentence again, it's nice. As a spiritual person, such a devotee returns to Tat, the personality of Godhead, and plays and dances with him. That is the ultimate goal of life. So the language of yesterday's verse was Sva Gatim. And we mentioned in Prahlad's uh, statement, it's Sva Arta Gatim. Arta Gatim. Arta meaning that which is of value is Arta. For materialistic people, what is of value is economic development or money. Money is the honey, get money by hook or by crook, get money, because that's the goal. Because once you have money, you can be happy, right? And because money buys happiness, right? But arta actually doesn't mean economic development or money. It means that which is desired, arta. And sva arta getim is one's own real purpose of life. The purpose of life is Vishnu attaining the shelter and the association of Lord Vishnu. So that's the previous language, Sva Gatim, or Sva Arta Gatim. Now here, Prabhupada is pointing out, it's the same meaning, just different language, Nijam Padam, just like Nija Bhakti Yoga. Nija is, you know, perpetual. And, um, Padam. Pada means feet. So, so the, the, at, at the, the eternal position of at the feet of the personality of God. That's Vishnu is the Sva Arta or Sva Gatim or Nija Padam, the goal. And one who receives, so 
one who receives transcendental knowledge from a proper guru of the Supreme Lord or representative, transparent representative of the Supreme Lord, has that opportunity. It's a great opportunity. It's, it's not just relief from material existence. It's the permanent situation of the living entity. It's the real goal of life. And so yesterday's verse and today's verse is uh, King Satyavrata saying to Matsya, Avatar, you are that kind of guru. Therefore, I take shelter of you. You're not the other kind of guru because the other kind of guru leads people into this just simply repetition of the misery of material existence in the name of spirituality. Asat, more asat, more varieties of asat, higher grade, lower grade, whatever it is, according to divisions of faith. I'm tempted to make a little comment. I'll make a little comment on a, uh, in, I think it's an important topic. Harry Potter and that whole thing that that by its popularity marketing has put out so much interest in witchcraft and witch worship and ghost worship and vampires and you know worship in the mode of ignorance exactly according to the teaching of Bhagavad Gita it's, you know so very gifted writer has used her gift in such a way that faith in the mode of ignorance has abundantly increased. And I don't know the extent of it, but the little bit that from now, every now and then it crosses my vision. Why is it really popular because mode of ignorance is really popular and worship according to the mode of ignorance has become really popular I mean I sometimes uh, when I visit homes I'm put in a room where their teenager who's now off at college stays and the bookshelf has like two shelves filled with not just Harry Potter but all the other stuff that's in the genre of, you know, Tamagoon. Not just, you know, what used to be is pirate stories, you know, in, in high school literature and those kinds of things. Now it's, you know, it's, it's a whole other genre, really dark, Ooh. popular. It's the age of Kali the age of darkness and light in this age of darkness comes from Amala Purana and promoting interest in Amala Purana by living its message and sharing its message and helping people go from the, 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 the darker or the impersonal or the voidistic prevalent message out there to shelter of the personality of Godhead. It's, it's a nice service. Certainly it has its challenges, and but it's a nice service. It's a nice service. The, the, you know, the other energy out there is there's, it's abundant. And without the option of transcendence and even what transcendence means, like what's that? Interesting sounding word, but uh this is Lord Chaitanya's mission, is in this dark age of Kali, give the holy name and this wonderful message of Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita. That's a nice challenge. I mean, life is a challenge. So take a nice one. And it's good for us and good for them at the same time. That's our Acharya's teaching. It's good for us and good for them at the same time. 
and transcendentally good. Transcendentally good. It will help us achieve life's goal. And it will help them to whatever degree the message goes through the, the fog and the clouds. Um, some light. takes a while, but it's, it's a nice service. Very useful contribution. Okay, so any comments or questions? Yes. I'm wondering... Um, the proper way to be serious. Proper way to be serious. About advancing. Just about, about, about advancing. Yes. Without being um, hard-hearted. The proper way to be serious about advancing. You're wondering about that. Yeah. You want to elaborate? Without becoming like overly like externally serious. Like um, where the, you become... The very nature of your question, the, the answer is built within it, it sounds like. You know, how do you, how do you, how do you get real? How do you be really... You know, it, it's just another, another way that question is commonly asked is how to become sincere. Sincere means without something else. It's just one thing. And it's a cultivation because there's, we start with a mix. There's something and there's something else. You know, we're conditional and we want, you have a whole bunch of wants. That's not, you know, on target. It's the mix. It's our conditioning. So how do you get to the, un, you know, the, there's only one thing, that that's sincere. I remember very clearly, it just stuck. That Sahotra Swami was giving a class on Sincerity, which is similar to you. So he, he explained, and I've checked since then, and I couldn't find it exactly the way he explained it, but sincere comes from a, a Latin word, skire, which indicates marble that doesn't have lines in it. Like, you know, the deity is very expensive marble because there's no lines in it. Normally marble has lines in it. But there's a certain kind of marble that has no lines in it. That's the Latin word is skire. So sincere is like that. There's only one thing. Only one thing. So how do you get to that only one thing position? According to um, the purport of 241 Bhagavad Gita, he doesn't cite Balade Vijibhusan, but it's Balade Vijibhusan is the source saying the way to get there, where it's only one thing, is having implicit faith in the instructions of the spiritual master. Then you can get there. Okay, how do you get that? <laughs> to get there. You know, by uh, it, it, there has to be some desire to get there. And the means to get there is there. So having a strong desire to get there. So, you know, we're like wet wood. We have to become dry wood before we can get there. And then the, the dry... So the, the method <clears throat> is hearing and chanting done properly. And hearing and chanting done properly is with, the, the, with an intent, although we're, or our intentions are mixed, cultivating the intent. Anukulyena Krishna Anushilan. It's right there. That's how. You know the meaning of Anukul? Acceptance? Anukul Pratikul? Anukulyena Sankalpa Pratikulyena Varjanam. Familiar? The, the, the principles of surrender begin with Anukalyena sankalpa. Sankalpa, you know the meaning. Like, you know, what you want. Your sankalpa. 
I want an ice cream cone. Or, you know, I want to become rich or I, something. So when, when in Vedic uh, rituals, there must be an utterance, a formal utterance of a sankalpa. What's the intention? That's, you know, the intention. Behind the behavior is an intention. It drives the behavior. So what's your intention? Sankalpa. Anukoyasha, sankalpa. Those things, so if the sankalpa is the goal, that, you know, how do I get to that point where it's, I'm really serious about, or I'm really sincere, there's nothing else going on. That's the unmixed position. It's an sankalpa, it's an intention to get there. I'm not there. I want to get there. I have strong desire to get there. I also have some other desires rumbling around. Just due to conditioning, not like super energized, but... And then, you know, the sine curve, I, you know, it goes up and down and up and down. The intention gets more clear, gets less clear. So you cultivate the intention, sankalpa, anukulya, and accept things <clears throat> that assist that. And pratikulya is the opposite of accepting practically yes of arjuna you just discard the rest there are obstacles to get the intention you discard them again and again and again and again you know and again and again and again and again like pulling weeds again and again make sure you got the root when you pull the weed not just to clip the top so those are two the first two principles, according to Padma Purana, of surrender. You have to have a clear sense of intention. So the, that within your question is the answer. Guided by that nice teaching of Padma Purana, cited in Nectar Devotion. And then the rest. You just continue to elevate the, the clarity and sincerity and the the effort that one makes towards the intention and we're hearing what the intention is nija padam or sva gatim and you know supposing i don't know what that is then we hear in disciplic succession that that identifies it okay i accept simply because i've heard it i accept it now the cultivation part, that's what we're doing. Anukulyasya sankalpa, and just revisit it and revisit it. Krishna, the, the, there's intelligence needed to guide that intention, but Krishna is very kind. He gives that intelligence if that's what you really want. And he knows what you really want better than what you know what you really want. Yes. Guru Maharaj, um, you mentioned the experience that you have when you encounter people and they ask you, what are the principles of what your religion? What, what, what are your teachings? What you, what's, your, what's your view on, what's your message and for people? Yeah, you explain and then they hear, but they don't hear. They just keep their own conception, like is what you said. And I was thinking in terms of the, you know, us devotees sometimes hearing the instructions of the spiritual master or those superiors and, and thinking that I have understood the instruction, but in reality, I'm just holding to my conception. Uh, um, so how, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with it? You keep hearing. <laughs> keep submitting to the even the one that you heard because how can you submit to something that you were supposed to hear but you didn't hear what you heard but you're all you're always ready to refine that understanding because it happens spiritual life is dynamic and then you hear again oh then you hear again oh greater clarity i'm i'm uh hearing your question the nice Prabhupada story came to mind 
this I heard, you, you know Adarshi? You know Adarshi. So Adarshi was Bhakta Ed when Prabhupada arrived at JFK in 1971. 71 or 72. Maybe it was 72. You know, the summer, 72. And at that time, there was no... TSA, you could go right to the gate. So there was, you know, a large number of devotees, 100, 150 devotees. And we were trying to be subdued and sitting down. But when Prabhupada came out of the gate, it was over. Jumping and flowers and gongs and, you know, the, the, the airport security. A little disturbed. But, you know, we were having instead of celebrating Prabhupada's arrival. And it was, it was prearranged that Prabhupada was t escorted to a lounge. He knew, so he was escorted to a lounge where he sat down and there was a reporter, someone from a, the media in New York City. The devotees were at, on the floor, seated at Prabhupada's feet, and the reporter, the question was, Swamiji, you've come to America, you have so many followers now, it must be that you have a message for the American population could you share with us what that message is? And Prabhupada's answer was so simple, was, um, I've come to teach you who you really are. Because people have forgotten their true identity. He didn't, you know, not so much elaboration. These messages are taught in Bhagavad Gita, and so we wish to Pro, you know, propagate the message of Bhagavad Gita and have people understand who they really are. Or, you know, the, the similar message in Tompkins Square Park, I've, I've come to remind you of that which you have forgotten. Very simple. Well, you know, different people are going to hear different things and, you know, did the reporter really understand what Prabhupada meant when he said, I want to, t you know, teach you who re you really are. There's all kinds of other ideas of self-actualization and self-realization and without, you know, self-realization fellowship. and it, it includes the relationship with Krishna. Otherwise, it's not self-realization or who you really are. But, you know, just a simple message. So you hear it again and hear it again and hear it again and hear it again. And in the context of Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam, then, you know, oh, that's what he meant. It just gets refined over time. The heart has to become pure. The filters have to be removed. The mix has to be reduced. Then we can hear. Yes. Um, Shalom Paswami. Um, Nad wanted to ask this question yesterday. <clears throat> it was... Um, the, um, you know, in line with that, um, <clears throat> you know, you were pointing out the comparing contrasting of the um, guru that was present in the verse yesterday. And the question that came to mind was that um, the criterion that's uh, met um, sometimes a person may express that the criterion that's made to recognize the proper guru is a visible purity. And um, <clears throat> then um, the, the exposure to persons that are, or somebody following a, a guru who meets that criterion, uh, the person will not see the same purity in the follower and so the question becomes how can one accept the instructions coming from the follower of the um, mm. pure guru uh, because the <clears throat> same visible purity isn't there so <clears throat> um, if one were to um, respond to that what would be um, a response that could be helpful. Well, if I've understood your question correctly, 
Prabhupada's answer to that question is, on more than one occasion, he articulated, I may be imperfect, but if I repeat the words of the perfect person, my speaking is perfect. So the, the implication is, say it the same in a different language, purity is here and I'm here, but the message of purity, just like the message of Bhagavad Gita, is surrender to Krishna. So I say, surrender to, unto Krishna. And although I'm not 100% surrendered unto Krishna yet, message is the right message. Surrender unto Krishna. Or, and you'll take any other example of the teaching of Bhagavad Gita. You're not this body. I still have some identification with the body and the mind, but the teaching is we're not this body. We're eternal spirit, soul, part and parcel of Krishna. Now, I'm not in full realization of that, of that, that the purity level is not at that stage. So, how, do, how does one who hears from someone who is not at that level of purity yet receive the message? Just be really clear what the message is. And, you know, I can take guidance from or assistance from or help from one who's not there yet, purity-wise, if I see A and B. The message that they speak is consistent with the message of Krishna and the, the disciplic succession pure devotees their message is consistent and I see this individual is consistently striving and engaged engaging themselves in the means of purification like Prabhupada's statement to in another occasion um when someone is standing in the shower to become clean don't fault them for being not clean yet. They're taking the means to become clean. Bhajate mam and anyabhak. They're un undividedly engaged in activities of bhakti. So I may want to take verification that such the advice to that person who you're you know, asking about there, saying, well, how do I hear the message of someone that's representing a person that's pure, that, but I know that they're not fully pure yet. Well, you, you cross-reference what they say with the person that's pure, or you know, the Bhaktivedanta purports. Read Prabhupada's books. And if the message that you're hearing is consistent, then you're okay. If you hear something that's not consistent, then you can you know, be a little hesitant. But it's not, you have to be hesitant in all circumstances because they're not there yet if they're transmitting the message properly. And by so doing, they'll become pure. Okay. She has a question. How to be like, uh, not to carry out the emotions of others? How not to carry, how to not carry the emotions of others? Mm. You got an, enough of them, don't you? I mean, each of us, not you. Each of us has our own abundant set of emotions. So, it, it's a... It's an important question, it's an important function of devotees because in the world there's, you know, lots of negative emotions. So you, it, it's nice to carry the positive emotions, but you get on the bandwagon of the positive emotions, then you're, you're inviting, you know, all the negative ones too. So it, the, the, the best, the transcendental message is you... The ten, our, your tendency or our personal tendency towards carrying emotions is in relation to Krishna. 
That's the transcendental solution. So supposing somebody has, they're, they're, they're feeling a negative emotion due to circumstances. Now, how does Krishna feel about that? Well, Krishna doesn't like people to suffer. So we, our attention goes to Krishna and Krishna is, so you, then you pray to Krishna about the suffering of this person or the world or the negative emotions of, of, of others. You turn your attention to Krishna because he is the one that can effect some change if there's to be some change. Prayer. Shelter taking in Krishna. And as much as it's in your power to do something, then you do something. You take some positive action that's an antidote to the uh, unpleasant emotion and you know take a transcendental pass at it like you know promote hearing and chanting because that's the transcendental you know remedy or antidote to negative emotion it's, it's involvement in matter that's has the modes of nature and everything is temporary so take the take the, uh, a transcendentalist's approach to taking shelter of Krishna and promoting shelter of Krishna to help that negative or unpleasant emotion that somebody is carrying. So you don't have to carry it. You're, you're, it's like a doctor. It's a good comparison. The doctor administers medicine. He doesn't, he may have some empathy for the suffering of the patient, but his, his solution is he's administering medicine or the means to get cure to whatever degree there can be a cure for the the, the the disease condition. Administer the medicine as where you where you place your and, and depend upon Krishna for. It. Please be kind upon this person that's has difficulty and as a result negative emotions due to that difficulty. Promote connection with Krishna. And in a, you know the, a, a, an appropriate manner as best as you can understand an appropriate manner is. My thought is going to people that are engaged in hospice care because there's just something came to my attention this past week. A, a devotee in China, really nice man, uh, has had a chronic illness and the chronic illness he tried this and that and the other thing and it's it, it not, not getting better now it's getting worse and the doc that all the different doctors that he's tried to get help from they're saying you know there's nothing they can do so his light's going out you know that th so th the devotee community there is has a lot of concern for th this really nice Prabhu and his lights going out. So I recommended that they contact the Vrindavan Hospice and see if they they could admit him. So then there's the community in China, and then there's the people that work in hospice, and that's what goes on. And it's not just di disease that can be cured, but it's the diseases that can't be cured. The lights going out for all those people that go to a hospice. That's why they're there. So. What about that, you know, the emotion of the people that work with hospice? You can't carry the emotion of the person that the light's going out. You can be in service to them so that th that transition can be uh, as Krishna conscious as possible through the midst of all the, whatever it is, pain and grief and attachments and, and stuff. And from what I understand from people who do that service, um, it's, it's the, the reward is in being the assistant to the person that's passing through that difficulty in the best possible way, according to Krishna's in, enabling them to do so. So take the hospice service and take that message and apply it to your question. Just, you know, someone's passing through some troubled waters. You do the best that you can, rather than carrying the, the negative emotion that they may be feeling, help them make the transition to 
uh, the, the the boat that takes them to Krishna. And they can say yes or no or maybe, but you know that's what you can do. <laughs> 